video is to uh, uh, demonstrate with StackCrunch how we uh, uh, run a two-way ANOVA. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is grab our data. Should be a absolute pro at this by now. Uh, just make sure the data set is somewhere that you can find it. So I'm going to use BMI over hospital and gender. You will have access uh, to this data set. Pop it in uh, StackCrunch, and here we go. So uh, unlike uh, what we did uh, over here in R, uh, where we have to force facility and sex, the two categorical variables of the factor, uh, we don't have uh, to worry about that in StackCrunch. So uh, <clears throat> if you uh, paid attention to the previous video, I created the model and I uh, checked the assumptions first. Uh, I'm, uh, I guess I'm going to do that here too. Uh, to, uh, so uh, to demonstrate how we calculate a two-way ANOVA in uh, StackCrunch, I just go to ANOVA, go to two-way. The responses can only be quantitative, so it gives us the selection of only BMI. Uh, the uh, column factors will either be facility or sex. And we have some interesting choices here. I want to plot the interaction. I want to display the means table. And just in case we have statistical significance with, this, with the interaction, which we know we're going to because we've already run this uh, analysis with the R, Although you're going to find out something, or I think you're going to find something different. I think the, uh, the sum of squares calculation will be a little different. Uh, and let's run uh, our residuals. Now, it's going to save these residuals in a new column. And if you remember from last video, uh, we need to run our Shapiro-Wilk on the residuals to test the equal variance uh, uh, assumption. So just run compute and you get a whole lot of stuff. Uh, and you not only get a whole lot of stuff, you get three different pages, which you can navigate right down here. So the first thing, uh, I like StackCrunch for this reason. It noticed that we have an unbalanced design. So it did what's called the type three sum of squares calculation method. Uh, if you remember, this is the command we used in R to get that. Unfortunately, and this can cause some confusion for students, especially when they're entering in kind of a lower level of statistics class. You notice over here we ran a type 3 with R, and it had an intercept, which had a very, very large sum of squares uh, attached to the decomposition. Uh, over here, the ANOVA table, we do not have an intercept. Therefore, the sum of squares and the F statistic, I mean, notice the F statistic facility. 745. The F statistic over here for facility is 314.7. Um, that is why I know I'm <laughs> very, very redundant uh, saying this throughout the lessons. It's why you must tell the reader uh, the statistical software package that you use. But regardless, uh, our focus is on the uh, interaction of facility uh, and sex. And we can see that we have a 0. 0.00002 p-value, so we have statistical significance at the 0. 0.001 level. So the next table that it gives us are the means uh, and the counts. And you can see that we have an unbalanced design. There are 46, I'm sorry, there are 34 females from facility B. There's not 34 males from facility A. All of these cell counts here would need to be the same to have a balanced design. Now, we don't have that. Uh, so we can pretty much uh, ignore the Tukey HSD for the main effect. We can pretty much ignore the Tukey HSD for the other main effect sex. And we'll come down to the Tukey HSD for uh, the interaction because the interaction is significant. Guaranteed test question, uh, if the interaction is not statistically significant, what do you do? Well, you rerun the model uh, without the interaction. And um, uh, at the, in, in that situation, you would focus on the main effects because the interaction is not significant. So, uh, you know, we have the same thing. We have... Um, uh, all of these pairwise comparisons are statistically significant. 
uh, aside from uh, females from facility B compared to females with facility A. And this one, males from B are significantly different than males from A. Everything else turns out to be statistically significant. Uh, come on over, we get uh, two marginal mean plots. It's just a matter of preference. Uh, I typically prefer, uh, and, and either one of them would be perfectly fine to present, but I typically prefer the one with the, on the horizontal axis with the least number of levels. So the way they've collected gender here, just male and female. The way they've collected facility here is A, B, and C. So, but they, you know, they both uh, really tell the same story. So you would choose one over the other. Uh, if you don't know what to do, just flip a coin. All right. So now we created these residuals so we can check the uh, normality assumption. Uh, so it's really weird the way we do this. We have to run a one sample t-test with data. And we want to pop our residuals into the t-test. We don't even care about this. We're not making a, a, a test for the population mean of the residuals, which, by the way, would be zero. We want the option of running the Shapiro-Wilk normality test on the residuals. So compute. Uh, we do not get statistical significance. Remember that, uh, and again, this was covered in the previous video, that the null hypothesis for Shapiro-Wilk is that the um, uh, residuals come from a normal distribution. Uh, the alternative would be that the residuals do not come from a normal distribution, so we fail to reject the null. We do not have statistical significance, so we can assume normality. I don't like the way this stack crunch runs the uh, equal variance, homogeneity of variance. Homogeneity of variance is just a fancy way of saying equal variance. Uh, I don't like the way it, uh, it runs this because it forces you to look at BMI. Well, that's my bad. It forces you to look at BMI over each categorical variable one at a time. So we'll run Levine's. So for facility, we reject the claim that we have equal variances. For sex, we're going to reject the claim that we have equal variances, so we do have the homogeneity of variance issue. Now, uh, what should you do if this happens? You should report the results and go on and run the analysis and, and, and go with it. We have an extremely large data set here, and you'll find that as you uh, deal with these things more, uh, that uh, a data set, uh, I think we had 333, yeah, something like that, uh, that the sampling distribution will uh, uh, be approximately normal. And the, the equal variance assumption is not uh, a major concern. But you need to let the reader know that and, and uh, just be transparent in reporting this. Now, uh, let's shoot over here to R. Something else that we would need to um, uh, report would be effect size. And I just went ahead, just for saving time and, uh, you know, clumsy fat fingers and making typos, uh, I, I went ahead, inserted the data, uh, entered the data into R. And uh, so from there to there, it's just kind of a snapshot of what was covered in the previous video. Now, uh, effect sizes. Uh, in your field, uh, occupational therapy, nursing, health sciences. Uh, it is extremely important uh, in the health sciences and social sciences that uh, effect sizes are reported. There's a lot of different effect sizes for two-way ANOVA. There's uh, omega squared, partial eta squared, eta squared, Cohen's D, uh, oh gosh, let's see, Haas, uh, I forget, there's, there's another one that kind of improves on... Um, Hedges G, uh, yeah, there's other things that you can report. And, you know, again, you can, you can find this stuff through a simple Google search. But uh, the one I'm going to teach you uh, uses the package effect size. So the first thing you have to do is install the package just like that. Uh, 
when you go through, I chose the CRAN, C-R-A-N, of Ohio. Just use something, and they're all stable. Uh, next thing I have to do, anytime I install a package, I have to access the library. Notice that this does not include quotation. And then I use the Omega Square for model. Now, uh, it hit me that, well, this is the Omega Squared on the model that doesn't account for uh, the unbalanced design. So what I did is I thought, well, that's not cool. I need to create the model. Uh, and I just called it new model using the ANOVA type 3 sum of squares calculation method. And uh, do a summary of the new model. Gives me a bunch of garbage. Doesn't help. But <clears throat> it does give me the omega squared for uh, the main effect of facility the main effect of sex, and the interaction effect of facility over sex. Now, the, the, the magnitudes of these, uh, or the guidelines, 0.01 indicates a small effect with this particular effect size, the omega squared. Uh, 0.06 is a medium effect, and 0.14 is a large effect. So the effect for facility is large. The effect for uh, sex is large. And the effect for the... Uh, uh, interaction at 0.04, eh, 0.04 is closer to 0.06 than it is 0.01. So I'd be okay with stating a medium effect, or uh, you could even say you know a small to medium effect since it is pretty close. Um, so uh, that's all I have for two-way ANOVA. Um, so we'll probably uh, well, not probably I'll uh, probably. Uh, find another data set in a health rate related example. Uh, I'd actually like to find one where the interaction is not significant. Uh, and and, and just, just, just to show you that, uh, let's say up here, let's just say, let's assume that this interaction was not significant. Then what I would do, just make a minor change to, to get rid of the Uh, yeah, so all I would do there is just change the multiplication time sign to a plus. So that is telling R that uh, I don't want to look at the interaction. I just want to look at the two main effects. And you can see that I only had the two main effects. Then you would obviously want to follow this up uh, with a model because uh, the ANOVA model and the type, uh, we want the um, type 3 sum of squares and um, report as is. All right. Well, gang, I hope that uh, this is easy for you. Uh, again, we don't worry about the mathematics behind all this, you know, how these, you know, why is that intercept there, and why, what do these sum of squares mean? We don't worry about that in this class because um, yeah, just let stack geeks like me worry about stuff like that. All right. I think that's it. Um, yeah, I think it's it. All right, take care.